hello guys uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to connect to Oracle database and perform some CRUD operations using Spring Boot uh, first uh, we need to create a Spring Boot application so we uh, we just need to go to Spring Initializer website Okay. Then we need to generate our uh, Spring Boot application project template. Okay, so we just uh, choose Maven project, then the version of Spring Boot, then packaging is jar, version is eight. Okay, I think uh, we can add dependencies also. This is web that generate okay once you generate that project we just uh, extract it we can even rename it first before we extract demo uh, let's say oracle or yeah oracle Right. Okay. Oops. Oh, I, let me rename it. Then let uh, let me open the project in our IDE. New existing. Uh, okay, Oracle grant them. Okay. Next. Next. new window okay so once we load the project the spring boot project the first thing we need to do is to add the dependency uh, first we need to add the dependency for uh, uh, spring data or J, uh, jpa data and the uh, uh, driver for J, uh, oracle jdbc let me paste the I already prepared it okay so this is the uh, data JPA and the driver right You may notice here uh, the scope is runtime because we only need the driver during runtime. Okay, then after uh, adding the dependency, can load it. Let's check if it's downloaded already. Okay, this is that uh, the driver, the Oracle JDBC driver, and the JPA should be here also. Okay. 
spring boot ah uh, this one okay so after uh, adding the dependency uh, we need to uh, add the, some configuration the we need to uh, configure the data source the connection string the u the url username password and the uh, oracle server let me copy and paste all right so this uh these are the uh, properties for data source configuration so i already i already uh i have a uh, oracle server in my local so the database name is this right and this is the default uh, uh, database port and the username and password okay this is the driver uh, at first uh, I want to create the table so I need to enable this okay then after this configuration we need to uh, add a, an entity let's create a new class let's say user okay let's copy and paste i prepare already here name So basically, uh, we need to annotate it with an uh, entity at entity table. This is the name of uh, the table in our database. Then the uh, we need to define the key. In our case, uh, the key is the ID. Okay, column name call it uh, customer ID then we want to uh, auto generate this key okay then uh, let's create a getter and setter and also constructor constructor first We need to uh, create also the default uh, constructor, meaning uh, the constructor without uh, arguments. Okay, it's it's a, a mandatory. Then also generate the getter and setter. Okay. All right. So once uh, our entity class is ready, we need to uh, create uh, an interface for our uh, Spring Data. So it's actually it's a J, uh, JPA interface. Create uh, normally uh, we can call it a user repo repository. Okay. So this interface we need to uh, extend the JPA CRUD repository. Okay. Let me copy and paste that interface. So this one. Okay. Why we need to in uh, extend this? Because uh this one this interface is uh this will implement the as you remember a while ago we we added some dependency right this one inside this jar it has some implementation of this interface so uh by extend this extending this interface we can take advantage of the built-in CRUD operations, JPA operations like uh, uh, insert, delete, update operations. 
okay so after creating the uh, this interface all right uh, we, we can uh, we can use basically that interface so auto wired uh, user repo then uh, you can uh, create it and uh, rest endpoint to for testing purpose only so that's exposed here uh, let's create and uh, add some endpoint here let's say test public string Yes. Then repo. Save. See, the uh, we can take advantage of this uh, API, right? All we have to do is just uh, extend this, and we can the implementation. Uh, the Spring Boot will take care of the implementation. I mean, the Spring Boot uh, starter project, which is this one, will take care of the implementation okay so uh, let's create an entity instance user and let's put some data all right then save okay we can uh, okay then we can return some string here uh, three uh, let's say this oh maybe we can return it uh, after saving we can return repo find all stream join okay we can We can add, um, we can override the to string method here so that we can uh, see some uh, yeah. So we can see the content of the user. Okay. So basically, uh, that this. Uh, to string method will display this right the content of the user uh, object okay why we need to do that because here in our uh, uh, in our and uh, rest api or endpoint we are returning a user instance so so this instance will return a user object right so then we call this a string to string which will display the content of the user instance right let's make test let's put a break so we can easily trace oops we get some error here i think our oracle server is down so let me 
uh, let me uh, bring it up mini cool start let me start our oracle oh sorry I think uh, I'm using docker for oracle docker yes so docker start to to e7 so this is the content container id of the oracle to to e7 all right so now let me check docker yes so now our oracle is up okay so let me run again Let me build maybe our let me build our maybe we need to build our application. Okay, so let me uh, trigger this uh, endpoint so we can test our uh, repository. Where is it? It's missing anyway let's use the safari so let me hit that url localhost 8080 right 8080 test all right so okay so we expect to return this right so our repository will uh, retrieve it from the database so we expect uh, this will uh, the web page will return this uh, Adam Villegas text okay let me check okay success so meaning our uh, repository is working we can re successfully retrieve it from the database so that's that's it guys thank you for watching this video see you again bye bye happy learning